Okay, Baruch Hashem, good. <coughs> so, we are in uh, Parashat Re'eh. The Parashat Re'eh starts with the Re'eh Anuchi Nuten Lefanecha Yom Baracha Veklala. The Hashem is, is, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us that is putting in front of us, Hashem is putting in front of us the Baracha and the Klala, the, the blessing and the curse. Estamos en la paracharre y la paracharre comienza Rabino, Rabino Moshe hablando que Hashem pone la bendición y la maldición enfrente de nosotros. And what is the what is the bracha? So it seems like uh, telling us if you will do the commandments, then you will get the bracha. That's a simple understanding, okay? Which is obviously true. When we're following the commandments of the Torah, this is the this is bringing us the all the blessings. So this is the first point, but this is just the shot. Que nos dice la paracha y el mandamiento que si cumplimos y hacemos todo lo que dice los mandamientos de Hashem, entonces así también recibiremos este de los mandamientos. But my message is stronger than that. that Really, the Torah is telling us, you can read the, the, the beginning of the parasha, that not that the Torah that uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is putting in front of us is the condition for the blessing. You can see that the Torah, the, to apply the Torah, is the blessing itself. Nos dice Rabino que quiere traer un mensaje mucho más poderoso, un mensaje con más profundidad, y que el, el leer la, la Torah Y la Torah es exactamente el, el, la fuente de la bendición. And this is something that is very, very important to look on. That when, it's, when the Torah is telling us, Hayom, I'm putting in front of you today. So you can read as today as a historical event that happened to be when Moshe Rabbeinu was standing with Am Israel in the desert before he passed away, and he's telling them all of uh, Sefer Dvarim. So in that day, he's telling us th those words. You can read it this way, which is the Pshat. Or you can say that Hayom, it means today when you read it, every day, whenever you contemplate about it, whenever you remember that it is living within us today. Cuando dice Rabino Moche, Rabino Moche, Hayom, está, podemos este, eh, cogerlo literalmente como el Pashat hablando de hoy. Hoy estoy diciendo, hoy estoy hablando. And this is something that is very special and important understanding that the Torah is not history book. You can also read it as a history book. But the Torah is not a history book. All the events that happened in the Torah is living within us in the present. In every moment, every moment that of our life, every present moment, we have all of the Torah living inside of us. La Torah no es un libro de historia. La Torah, cada momento en nuestro presente, en nuestra vida, está actualmente corriendo constantemente en nuestra vida. So la Torah no es un libro de historia, es un libro que está en el presente, en la vida de cada uno de nosotros. And this is the blessing. When we have that understanding, when we are living, when we are connected to the Torah that is living inside of us, this is the blessing because this is the connection to Hashem. When we have this connection that is that the, the line is open, that the, the stream, the pipe, the, 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 the blessings are, is flowing within, within that pipe. And the Torah is that pipe. The Torah is the line of the light that comes from Hashem into the creation, into all of the worlds, into all of the dimensions until it gets into our heart. And this is the, this is the blessing. This is the re'eh. This is the sight that, Hashem is, that Moshe Rabbeinu is giving us. Esta es la bendición. La Torah es la bendición que está frente a nosotros. En ese momento es cuando todas las líneas están abiertas, todas las dimensiones o los portales se encuentran abiertos. En ese momento la Torah es la bendición. Eso es lo que se refiere Rabino Moshe en este momento. 
So when someone is applying one of the principles of the Torah, okay, is, is activating that part of the Torah that corresponds into the same part of his neshama. Because the Torah is the same structure as our neshama. The same way that I said about the Torah, that is the channel that comes down from Hashem into us, also our neshama is the channel. It goes in the same, it, it has the same structure. The Tariag Mitzvot is the Tariag, the, 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 the 600 parts, 613 parts of our neshama, the same as our body, but first our neshama. Cuando activamos este mandamiento de tener la Torah enfrente de nosotros, es que se está activando estos portales, estas dimensiones. Según tenemos 613 eh, partes en nuestro cuerpo, así que se activa entonces la Torah en nuestra vida cuando nosotros ejercemos un, uno de los mandamientos. And those principles is, is the understanding them is understanding our inner being, is understanding ourselves. This is the structure of our, our, also our physical body, also our spiritual body, also our connection with Hashem. Everything is parallel. Everything goes together. So whenever we have one point that is activated, it is activated in all of those different dimensions, in our being, in our physical, in our spiritual, in the Torah, in the upper worlds, Everything, does, it's like, like a line of light that goes through all of those dimensions and pierces them and goes one after the other until it gets into the physical world. Cuando nosotros activamos este mandamiento es cuando nosotros entonces podemos comprendernos y entendernos a nosotros mismos y así también entender a Hashem. También de la misma manera es que al nosotros activarlos es que eh, los, los, las bendiciones bajan del resto de los mundos, de los cuatro mundos, hacia nosotros. Así que cumpliendo con estos mandamientos es que nosotros podemos entonces activar y bajar estas bendiciones de los mundos eh, más altos al mundo más bajo. Y this is the same also when we're learning the Torah. Whenever we are learning a certain part of the Torah, we are activating that part of the system. So this is the reason, this is the understanding of the words of Hazal that they're telling us, Kola osek ola kilo ekriv ola. If you're learning the laws of the sacrifice of Ola, is like, in a certain way, like you did the, the, the sacrifice of Ola. Even though you, we don't have the Bet Mikdash now, unfortunately, we don't, we're not able to do the sacrifices, but when we're learning, those parts of the Torah, it is the same. When we're learning about Sukkah, in a certain way, it's like we are doing Sukkah, the mitzvah of Sukkah. We are activating the same part of the system. Cuando estamos estudiando la Torah, estamos activando estas bendiciones. Así nos los enseña el Hazal y lo explica de la misma manera. Que estamos entonces activando estas bendiciones y bajando las bendiciones de los demás mundos. So those, those fundamentals, when we are, whenever we, we have, there's many people that they see the, the learning Torah as obligation, as a burden on them. Oh, I have to learn Torah. I have to go to the shiur today. Uh, I have to do, to, to do the mitzvah of the tefillin or this, some, you know, all kinds of things like that. But when we're understanding that whenever we do that, we are lighting our neshama. We are activating our connection with Hashem. This is the greatest privilege. Hashem gave us the, the, the control panel of all of the worlds. Whenever we're doing one of those things, we, are, we have the, all of the buttons of, to activate all of those different parts of the worlds, of the spiritual worlds, of the sefirot. Every, every mitzvah, every part of the Torah is related, is connected to one of those. So, what can be better, better position to be when, in all of the creation that Hashem created, all of the worlds, all of the, all of the constellations, everything, we, Hashem gave us the, this control panel and we, are, we have to 
obviously be responsible, but it is in our, our hands. See how much Hashem loves us. He gave us such a present. Cuando una persona siente que está estudiando la Torah es un peso, es un yugo, entonces esa persona no puede comprender o entender esto. Pero si nosotros entendemos que a través del estudio de la Torah es que Hashem nos ha dado todas las llaves, todos los botones, el, el panel de control para poder subir por todas las sefirot en todos los mundos, entonces podemos comprender y entender la gran bendición que Hashem nos ha dado para nosotros así poder activarnos in todos los mundos y ser uno con él. So this is this is something that uh, every time you need this inspiration when you 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 you, you, you need to do something and you feel that you don't have the inspiration. You feel that that there's a burden. If you take a few moments to stop all what you do and instead of starting the learning or starting the mitzvah to do meditation and to think about those principles. Think you can you can imagine you can see how different it will make the way that you 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 are able to do to perform the mitzvot in such a higher level when you do that it boosts up all of your being that you will have whenever you have the the inspiration so it makes a whole different it's a, it's much much bigger it's like like a like you have, you have some some kind of of a I don't know what how to what uh, what is a good parable for that, but someone that is you know living in a very very you know bread and and salt is not sustaining himself. He's almost like uh, uh, get, getting dying because of he's so hungry. And someone that in you know the other direction is living in a palace and he have the best food, the best uh, privilege, the best the best of the best of the best that is you know super healthy whatever it is. So this is in the physical. The same thing in the spiritual. When we don't have the inspiration, when so we we are sustaining ourselves. We okay. We're surviving somehow. We do. We are we are living on this minimal kind of of, of spiritual sustenance that is that is you know just to survive. But when you do that, when you think about these applications, those, those principles, you made it on them daily. So you're living like like in in the spiritual. You're living like a rich man. You have all the best of the best. All the, you're, you're giving your neshama the best sustenance. Your neshama is so happy. Cuando estamos, eh, que pensamos que estudiar la Torah es un peso o es un yugo, entonces la mejor manera es ponernos a meditar para nosotros poder levantar nuestro ser, levantar nuestros ánimos. Es como la historia que acaba de decir el rabino, en la cual una persona que solamente vive de pan y de sal eh, está muriendo de hambre completamente a diferencia de una persona que vive en un gran palacio tiene absolutamente todo so, una persona cuando se pone a meditar y se pone a estudiar la Torah tiene todos los beneficios igual que una persona que vive en un gran palacio y tiene absolutamente todas las cosas a su alrededor y que las puede disfrutar de esa manera podemos subir a todos los demás mundos y disfrutar de todo lo que no se nos ha dado and you have to know that this uh, problem of the of the spiritual hunger is is something that is not skipping anyone i i i saw in my in my eyes i remember many many years ago i was going to be a guest in a house of a hasidic uh, rabbi in uh, in uh, telston and the uh, rabbi Abraham Gottlieb. and I, okay maybe i shouldn't say the name <coughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so now I said the name, so I can't uh, say the story because I don't want to. It's not about him; it's about someone that he told. Him. Anyhow, forget about it. I will use a different example. The point is that there is many, many people that are born Jewish, religious, keeping all the mitzvot, learning in uh, yeshivot, going all through all of the system, and so on and so forth. But their soul is 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 starving. Their soul is not doesn't get the sustenance. You, 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 and, and, and they feel it themselves, and you can see it. It's so sad. Someone that is already doing everything and is not, is not getting the benefit of it, the spiritual benefit of it, because he's it, it ha- missing the, the, those, those principles. And this is, to my humble opinion, okay, maybe translate it. 
eh, cada uno de nosotros y cada persona tiene la necesidad y tiene el hambre espiritual de poder cumplir y estudiar la Torah. Esto es como eh, personas que nacen completamente judíos y no practican los mandamientos, eh, brincan uno y otro mandamiento, pero realmente esta hambre espiritual está en cada uno de nosotros y es de la única manera en que nosotros podemos ejercer y poder subir y crecer en los mundos eh, para nosotros poder tener los beneficios que se nos ha dado a través de la Sefirot y todos los mundos que Hashem nos ha traído a través del estudio de la Torah. So this is, to my humble opinion, the meaning of what Abaye in the Gemara I told the students. Please, my students, lo tarti tregenum. Don't have the inheritance of two times hell. Also in this world, also in the world to come. So there is people that are suffering from the Torah and the mitzvot that they're doing in this world. Instead of doing, getting the pleasure, they're suffering. For them, it's like hell. And then, because they're not getting, the, they don't, they don't know, they're not doing it right. So obviously, there's all kinds of problems that comes with it. And then they're receiving Chaz Shalom hell in the second, in the world to come as well. So they didn't enjoy each of, in, none of the, of, the, of the creation, no part of the creation that they, got, they, they enjoy. Como nos está, le dice Rabbi Noche para su estudiante y a través de la Gemara, que una persona que no estudia la Torah está prácticamente sufriendo dos veces este, el infierno. Por lo tanto, no deberíamos estar haciendo eso. Deberíamos estar de estudi estudiando la Torah para no tener que pasar por ese infierno, por esa muerte ahora en vida, como también después tener que pasarla en el mundo venidero por no haber cumplido con ninguno de los mandamientos que Hashem nos ha traído. Esta es una de las explicaciones que nos trae Rabino Shepard cuando él está enseñándole a sus estudiantes, a sus discípulos. So, this is also what I'm telling you, like what Abai said to his students, and also what Moshe Rabenu said in the, in the parasha. See, you have in front of you, you have the Baraha and the Klala. You can choose. What do you choose? You, you want to have the bracha? So what is the bracha? The Torah that, that is living within us today. Every moment in the present. Every present moment of our life, all of the Torah is there with us. And this is the blessing. You connect to the Torah. You connect to the blessing. You are happy. You have everything. You, you, have, you, have, the, the, you have the Gan Eden in this world. And has the Shalom, the opposite. Every time. It's not, it's not either or. For most of the people, also the people that they know those principles, doesn't mean that they are constantly 24-7 in that state of mind. Alevai, I wish. Bezrat Hashem for everybody. But most of the people, it is few percent here, few percent there. But those few percent is so precious, it is worth it to live a whole lifetime to have this experience even once. And how much more so if, you're if it's possible for you to meditate every time before you're doing your Amidah or before you're doing some mitzvah or some bracha or whatever. So you have those few moments of true living. It is worth it. All the rest of the life is worth it for those new moments. So dice Rabino Noche, para estar como le dijo Rabino Moche frente al pueblo judío, ustedes tienen la bendición al frente de ustedes. Nosotros somos los que decidimos si vamos a tener la bendición porque se nos ha dado la Torah. Pero así también dice que tenemos una maldición enfrente de nosotros. Nosotros somos los que la escogemos. Nosotros somos los cuales tenemos ese libre albedrío para decidir entre la bendición y la maldición. Cada pequeño momento que podamos nosotros tener para cumplir con los mandamientos, entonces vale la pena, vale la pena vivir. Eso, eso que real me, me realmente hace que la vida tenga su esencia. El que podamos cumplir con los mandamientos y poder disfrutarlos y vivirlos. Eso realmente es lo que hace que la vida tenga una esencia más. So, that was one part that I want to speak about in the Parashat Shavua. Another, another point that I want to share with you is that uh, I'm, I'm si I don't know if you see my, my background is, is a car. I'm sitting in a car. 
that uh, I, took, I took a big van and I took all, all my family to the north. And we visit many Kivrei Tzadikim. In the, in the last uh, couple of days, uh, we went to many, many Kivrei Tzadikim. So I want to speak a few words about the meaning of going to Kivrei Tzadikim because many people, they do that. They go to Kivrei Tzadikim and when they get there, they don't know what to do there. So just to, to make like a few, few points about it, Bezrat Hashim. Ok, si ustedes se dan de cuenta, quiero ahora empezar la segunda parte y hablo sobre la, la paracha eh, de esta semana. Si se dan de cuenta, él dice que si miran este, la parte trasera, el background, él se encuentra dentro de la van en la cual él eh, trajo todo, llevó su familia toda hacia el norte. Ha estado visitando grandes sadikim, grandes tumbas de los sadikim. Y en este momento eso es lo que él quiere eh, enfatizar y concentrarse sobre este gran precepto en la cual nosotros visitamos, él te está visitando los sadikim. So, one of the, of the principles of, of going to Kivrit Sadikim that is related to what we spoke about in the, in the Parashat Shavua is that those sadikim is, is an example for us of how it is possible to live up to those standards while you are in this world. Because for many people, they are experiencing all of the challenges of this world. And they say, ah, how can I do it? It's impossible to, to apply all of those principles. And I need to, to sustain myself. I, may, I need to make a living. I don't have time, this, that, all kinds of excuses, and so on and so forth. But when we're going to do all of those many, many, many tzaddikim in the previous generations, in the pre pre present generation, and so on, we see it's possible. It's possible. And if it is possible, so it's not only by them, it's also by us. We can be those tzaddikim. So we're going to those places to get the inspiration, to get the strength to, to do the right thing and to strengthen our way in, in the way of Hashem. Nosotros eh, visitar eh, las tumbas, visitar a los sadikim es algo muy importante porque a través de visitarlo también nosotros podemos ver esos grandes méritos que ellos tenían. Además, eso es lo que ellos querían, que nosotros aprende, aprendamos que sí se puede llegar a esos méritos, que sí nosotros, tanto los sadikim del pasado como los sadikim del presente, que podemos ser nosotros podemos lograr exactamente lo mismo que ellos lo hicieron a través del estudio y el esfuerzo de la Torah. No pensando que no se puede hacer, pero sí pensando que se puede realizar tal como ellos lo realizaron. Now, this is in a general way. And obviously, every tzaddik have a special quality. So, if we know some stories about this tzaddik, that we're going to visit this grave, So we can take those stories and use them as principles that is presenting to us those qualities. So with those stories, it's a way, it's something that we can hang our conscious on. And then we are receiving, we, we can connect to the Neshama of the Tzaddik stronger and to get this inspiration that I said before. Una de las cosas que podemos hacer es, cuando visitamos una de las tumbas de los Sadikim, es poder entender alguna de las historias de los méritos en las cuales ellos pasaron por la vida. Nosotros podemos visitar esas tumbas, podemos visitar esos Sadikim y podemos pensar en esa historia. Eso es una manera para nosotros poder conectarnos con los méritos de ese Sadikim y así nosotros también poder tener esos méritos de una manera en la cual nosotros también podamos realizarlas en nuestras vidas. So I did I did in the last uh, couple of days few videos of the of a few of the tombs that we went to and I gave few examples to, so you can see in the YouTube channel uh, short, short videos that I did for for to give those those principles to give those, the this uh, it, but it, again it is example you can do the same thing for yourself you, if you read The, the, the stories about the tzaddikim and you, and you put your mind into that. Not, again, not as a historical event, as a life example, even though it's someone that passed away thousands of years ago. But time has no meaning when you're speaking about the connection with the ship. 
So, so they, they have the different lifestyle, but it's the same world, it's the same physical world. So the same as what was in the past is also in the present. El Rabino nos ha dado en estos días varios ejemplos en eh, las tumbas que él ha visitado de los uh, Sadikim, pues él los ha grabado y lo ha puesto en la página de YouTube para que nosotros podamos tener un ejemplo realmente cómo es que nos podemos conectar, cómo podemos nosotros, de la misma manera en que él nos está enseñando, podemos nosotros conectarnos con estos Sadikim y con sus méritos. Todos nosotros lo podemos hacer. Si nosotros no podemos visitar una tumba de un sadikim en este momento, nosotros podemos, a través de la historia de uno de ellos, concentrarnos, meditar en esos méritos, y es exactamente lo mismo como si estuviéramos ahí en ese momento visitando una de las tumbas de estos sadikim. So, this is, this is a, obviously, on top of that, there is many, many meditations that are, like, much, much, higher level of, of technical terms of Kabbalah, that the Arizal revealed all, all kinds of, of uh, Yehudim with the uh, holy names. I'm not, I'm not going to explain all of that now, but obviously there is many more other things to do on top of that when you're going to Kivrit Sadikim to get, to get, to use the potential that is there. But this is the basic level. After, after you, you have that, so then you can add, you can build on top of that. Naturalmente, I otros términos mucho más avanzados, eh, por ejemplo, como los de Arizal, eh, aprender cómo hacer los Yehudim. Estos son términos mucho más avanzados para nosotros poder conectarnos cuando estamos eh, tratando de conseguir esos méritos de esos Sadikim, pero claramente en lo que nosotros podemos aprender a utilizar y llegar a esos términos correctamente, podemos entonces, como quiera, mantenernos en una muy buena conexión con la historia y los méritos a través de esa historia con la cual conocemos a los sadikim. Now, the, again, the principle is to connect to the neshama of the tzaddik. Okay? But for many people, it is it is very strange idea. What do you mean to connect to the neshama of the tzaddik? I need to connect to the to Hashem. And for many people, it sounds like uh, other religions. To connect to the neshama of tzaddikim. So it is, it is a, a point that I know that is very hard for many people, so I want to speak about it in a few words. El principio principal es poder conectarnos con la Neshama de los Sadikim. Para muchas personas esto puede pensar que suena casi igual como si estuvieran en otras religiones, pero realmente no es así. Y el Rabino Che para ahora nos quiere explicar eh, sobre ese punto de que no es exactamente como en otras religiones. So, the, the example that it's brought down in many, many books, also in the books of the Rizal, is that the tzaddikim are like giants, and we are like dwarves, very small. But we have the privilege, Hashem, Hashem gave us this, those tzaddikim, that we can use them, we're using them as a platform that we are standing on. We're using those giants as a platform. So, so even though we are very small, when, when we are standing on the shoulder of this giant, so we're getting a higher spiritual level. So after we're standing on this platform, so then we are able to connect to Hashem from that higher level. This is the idea. The idea is not, we're not connecting to the tzaddik and that's it. We're connecting to the tzaddik as a platform, as a beginning, stage one, to use that to get a higher level of connecting to Hashem. Uno de los principios importantes que debemos aprender aquí es de que realmente nosotros utilizamos estos sadikim como una plataforma. Ellos son los grandes gigantes. Nosotros somos muy pequeñitos al lado de ellos, pero tenemos el honor de que Hashem nos los dio a estos sadikim para que nosotros podamos conectarnos con Hashem de una manera mucho más fuerte y más cercana. Otra vez, los Sadikim son grandes gigantes, pero nosotros nos podemos conectar con ellos porque ellos son la plataforma para nosotros poder conectarnos con eh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, con el Todopoderoso. Another way to, to look at it, that is also true, and I have this tradition from Rav Israel Avichai, the, the Rosh Shiva of Betel, the Kabbalist Yeshiva in the Old City of Yerushalayim, 
Um, so he said, in a very simple way, when we go into the Kivrei Tzadikim, we are basically saying to Hashem, I want to live to those spiritual standards, like this person that is buried here. So this is, it's, a, it's a gateway, it's example to show Hashem what we want. We can point and say, this is what I want. I want to become, to be that spiritual giant. Lo enseña el Rabino Chepa, que él aprendió en, bajo su tradición en la yeshiva donde él estaba, de que cuando nosotros visitamos las tumbas de estos sadikim, lo que estamos enseñándole y demostrándole a, a Hashem es que, que queremos vivir al mismo estándar, al mismo nivel de estos sadikim. Y eso es bien importante, el que podamos demostrarle a Hashem de que queremos vivir bajo los mismos estándares y la misma altura de estos grandes hombres, según nos lo explica en este momento, Rabino Shepard. So it is, in a, in a certain way, we can also say that, that we are coming there and we're asking the tzaddik that is buried here, please, Rabbi, show me how you see life. Teach me what is your view. What is the way that life should be living, that I should live my life. To connect to Hashem, like you did connect to Hashem. Cuando visitamos entonces a estos grandes sadikim, lo que estamos prácticamente es diciendo, enséñame cómo pudiste lograr llegar en estos estándares tan elevados, conectarte con Hashem, con Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Eso es lo que estamos haciendo cuando estamos visitando una de las tumbas de los grandes sadikim o estamos meditando en ellos, que queremos vivir a esos estándares, a esos niveles, para poder tener esa conexión y esa intimidad con el Todopoderoso. So that, that was the second part of the class. And uh, now the, for the third part of the class, so you're welcome to ask questions, whoever have questions. Esta es la segunda parte de la clase. Ahora en la tercera parte de la clase, si usted quiere hacer alguna pregunta, eh, puede hacerle las preguntas que ustedes quieran a Rabino Shepard. If it is uh, with voice, so I would like to have also the video. Uh, obviously, just uh, if it is ladies, so just to make sure that it's new, uh, or text in the chat. Si tienen alguna pregunta, la pueden hacer en video. Si es una alguna dama, eh, eh, la pueden escribir eh, en texto. De esa manera, pues la podemos leer y la podemos entonces, la vino Chepa, poder contestársela. Otra vez de nuevo, si tienen alguna pregunta, pueden hacerla en este momento en audio. Si es alguna dama, por favor, lo puede textear. Somebody have a question? ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? ¿Alguna duda que tengan sobre el tema de hoy, sobre la paracharre o alguna pregunta de lo que habló el rabino Shepard? sobre la visitar las grandes tumbas de los grandes sadikim y conectarnos con ellos. I have a question, please. Yes. Uh, just to understand the way when you are in a in a sadik, uh, uh, how to say tumba, in, uh, where you sit, in, in a grave. In mm -hmm. a grave. Uh, what is the correct way to talk? Because I under I, I heard from you and from other persons also that I Talk to the, him like, let me show you or teach me how to be. But I'm talking to you, to, to him directly, or I should say, it's Hashem, uh, teach me how he lived or something like that. How is the correct way to, to, to talk with the? ¿Quieres tú traducirlo al español o yo lo traduzco y así con? Okay, le preguntaba al al al, al rap que cuál es la la forma correcta de de cuando uno está en las tumbas de poder este, eh, comenzar la oración o, o, o hablar, si se puede hablar directamente con el sádic, porque muchas personas dicen, enséñame cómo fuiste tú, ¿se, se le puede hablar al sádic? Por, por, o sea, si está, eh, pasó mejor vida o se, puede, o se tiene que decir a Hashem que él te enseñe eh, cómo vivió el sádic y que te dé las mismas cualidades, cuál es la, la, la forma correcta de expresarse. So... There is there is different views on that. Okay, the 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 simple way that everybody can do that is what the Mishnah Bura is saying. Okay, 
the, because it, obviously for many people it is a very problematic point. So according to the Mishnah Bura, the two possibilities is or you ask the tzaddik to pray to Hashem for you, that Hashem will, to, to ask the tzaddik to, to go to pray to Hashem. That's one way. And another way is to pray to Hashem in the merit of the tzaddik. Okay, okay. Th those, two, those two ways is obvious, simple. That's Mishnah Bura. Okay, that everybody have to agree on because it's brought down in the Mishnah Bura. Okay, hay dos maneras para poder este, hacer lo que eh, la, la respuesta de la pregunta es que podemos también nosotros decirle al Sadikin de que él vaya directamente donde es Hashem y ore por nosotros o que nosotros le digamos directamente a Hashem que por los méritos mérito de Sadikin entonces podamos conectarnos directamente con Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Estos son los dos medios más fáciles, más básicos que cualquier persona puede utilizar cuando visitamos este, las tumbas de los grandes eh, bustos, de los grandes sadikim. What I told you previously, that is uh, my inheritance from the Yeshiva Betel, the reason that I was emphasizing that I have this tradition, it's not something that I'm just uh, myself came up with, because I want, I want you to give that the, the, the right value, that is something that has tradition, okay? So that, that's the reason I mentioned that. Um, there is people that will argue with that, I know, but there is a tradition like that. So if you want to be connected with me, with my tradition, and to continue this line of tradition that I bring from the Yeshiva of Betel, you're welcome. If you, if you have a different rabbi that you are connected with and you want to ask his opinion of how to do this, I don't have any problem with that, your choice. Nos dice Rabino que eh, si ustedes quieren pueden también este, preguntarle a sus Rabino si tienen donde poder eh, hacer estas preguntas. Con él no hay ningún problema. Rabbi, we got a uh, other question here. And the question uh, is if all the Sadikins can be at the same time all around the world, or it's only in the cities they, they are in their graves. Okay. Um, this is a very interesting question. I, before I answer, I will make it a little bit wider. Okay. Um, obviously, we understand the Neshama is abstract. It is not limited to physical body. That's, right? Even when the person is alive, the Neshama is not limited to the physical body of the person. How much more so? when the physical body died. So the Neshama is obviously not connected. So why is it that we have to go to the Kivrei Tzadikim? What's special about the Kivrei Tzadikim? The same quality, the same Neshama. Whenever you think about that Neshama, whenever you learn the Torah of the Tzadik, whenever you made it on the name of the Tzadik, you can, you can get those qualities, you can get this inspiration. So why to go to the Kivrei Tzadikim? Lo que nos dice Rabino Shepard, que la Neshama no es un cuerpo. La Neshama puede, eh, es, no es, algo, es algo bien abstracto, es algo que no tiene límites. So, si usted está en el lugar donde usted, usted se encuentra, en cualquier parte del mundo, y usted se quiere conectar con los méritos de este Sadikim, usted lo puede hacer. La Neshama no tiene tiempo, no tiene espacio. Eso es algo muy importante que tenemos que entender. Uh, uh, we got a here... Also, okay. Uh, okay, okay. I, I didn't finish to answer. Okay, okay, <laughs> that yes, was, sir. That, yes, that, was, yes, that was the beginning of the answer. Okay, so that was so, the beginning of the answer. Okay, that was the beginning of the answer. So the second point is that, yes, it's true that the quality of the Neshama is not limited and it's found all around the world. I agree with that premise. Okay? And whenever someone is not able to go, to the Kivrei Tzadikim, because he's far away, because he feels that he's not, he's not in the spiritual level for that, he's not pure enough. There is all kinds of reasons why not to go to Kivrei Tzadikim. And I tell you the truth that me, myself, for many years, I didn't go to Kivrei Tzadikim. And my wife told me, yeah, it's very strange that for so long, we didn't go to Kivrei Tzadikim, and all of a sudden we're going to so many Kivrei Tzadikim, one after the other. 
Okay, so there is time for everything. There is time to go. There is time not to go. So for many years, I didn't go. And now I decided that it's time for me to go. That I, I see, I see that, that uh, it's needed. Okay, I, I can't, I can't uh, explain all, all, the, all the reasons. But the point is that there is time for everything. So whenever someone is not going to give it to the Kim, it is definitely possible to meditate with all of the Yehudim when you are in your house by yourself, just as meditation with the prayer. There's many places how, like how to do those meditations of connecting to the Neshamot of Tzadikim. But all of those principles that we are speaking about can be definitely applied in your house, wherever you are, definitely. Yes. La segunda parte de esta de la respuesta es que sí es cierto y él está completamente de acuerdo de que la Neshama eh, no tiene espacio y no tiene tiempo. Por lo tanto, no está en un solo sitio. Pero también tenemos que ver que hay veces que una persona no se encuentra preparado para ir a visitar las tumbas de los sadikín por varias razones. No puede llegar ahí o no se siente suficientemente eh, limpio, puro para estar enfrente de, este, de los sadikín, como le sucedió a él. Él dice que por muchos años él nunca fue a visitar ninguno de los Sadikim, ahora decidió poder visitarlo y que su esposa le dijo, ¿cómo después de tantos años ahora es que quieres eh, visitar a los Sadikim? Y él, la respuesta es muy sencilla. Todo tiene un momento, todo tiene un tiempo cuando nosotros estamos preparados. Pero también podemos conectarnos tal en los lugares donde estamos con los Yehudim de la misma manera como si estuviéramos ahí. Pero de nuevo, Todo tiene un tiempo. Va a haber un tiempo en el que podamos estar en las tumbas eh, visitando los sadikim, como también en las casas donde nos encontramos en este momento. Podemos conectarnos con ellos a través de las meditaciones. But when someone have the possibility to go to give a sadikim, he can use that as a trigger to apply all of those principles and to use all of those meditations. Because for when many times for, for many people, when they don't have a reason to do it right now, so they say, okay, one day I will leave it, I will do it. But when they push themselves physically to go and to get to, the, to, the, to those places, so then they have the opportunity, they have the, the, it comes into, into their life. They, got to, they get to a point that they have to do it, it's the time to do it. So they're doing it, they cannot like push it away again, right? So it is, it is, it is a, a, there is a certain, higher level of potential to use those principles when you are in Kivrei Tzadikim. Ok, es bien importante también comprender que todo lo que nosotros podamos aprender ahora para conectarnos con los Tzadikim va a haber un momento en el cual no vamos a poder este, ya evadir o tener alguna situación. Vamos a poder lograr estar en la tumba de los Tzadikim y conectarnos con ellos a través de todas las cosas que hemos aprendido, las meditaciones, los Yehudim, absolutamente todo eso. Por lo tanto, es bien importante de que sepamos en el momento en que sea preciso en nuestras vidas, en que podamos visitarlo, si sí vamos a poder utilizar todos los conceptos y todo lo que hemos aprendido. So, I will, I will, fin I will finish that point with, with the uh, is like a story, story, a joke story that many years ago I went to a Hasidic Rebbe in Tzfat, that is one of the all the rabbis of the Breslov community in Tzfat, many many years ago, and he said he said, I don't understand how the Arizal got to his level, because he didn't have the tomb of the Arizal to go to pray. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Rabbi. That's a very good one. <laughs> Nos dice Rabino, eh, un, un, antes de finalizar una, una broma, de que cómo es posible que Larizal pudo llegar a estos grandes niveles de los grandes Sadikim si ni siquiera estaba todavía a la tumba de Arizal cuando él estaba llegando a esos niveles tan elevados. So it is it definitely, definitely, it has, it has a very strong potential. To go to those places, it has a personal potential. But we have to push ourselves stronger. When you're going to, to such a big rabbi, if you look at it as someone that is alive, you're going to such a, such a holy person, you cannot just stay as you are. You have to change yourself. You have to 
upgrade yourself, your spiritual being. So someone that is not ready for that, is not ready to take this responsibility, so it's better to take it slowly and not to, not to go out of his way. But if, when someone is feeling that he's ready to make a change and to apply those principles in his life, so then it might be that it will be a, a good idea to go to a journey like that to visit uh, Kivrei Tzadikim. Naturalmente, si no nos encontramos preparados para visitar las tumbas de los grandes Sadikim, pues entonces es mejor no hacerlo. Pero va a llegar un momento en que vamos a tener la posibilidad de poder llevar, llegar a la tumba de los Sadikim porque estamos preparados. Estamos a un nivel en que podemos coger todo lo que hemos aprendido y poder presentarlo delante de estos santos Sadikim, de estos hombres tan grandes, estos grandes gigantes, para así demostrarle también que nosotros estamos a un nivel en la cual podemos presentarnos delante de ellos. Uh, Rabbi, I got here two more questions. You are able to yes. maybe answer them? Yes, yes. Okay. If it's possible, elevate the soul that is not listening all this that we are learning right now in this moment. Again, again, I didn't answer the question. Okay, that is possible that a person that is not Jewish, just listening all the shiur and the studies that uh, right now you are giving, that person can elevate his neshama, his soul. Definitely there is a possibility for someone that is not Jewish to elevate his soul. Obviously, there is a difference between someone that is Jewish and someone that is not Jewish, but, the, but also people that are, that are the, keeping the, the Noahide laws, they have a spiritual elevation. So those principles that I, that I was speaking about today is something that can be definitely applied also by Noahides. Um, the, 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 obviously, everything has deep meaning according to the person. Uh, different people that are doing the same thing, it will have a different meaning. But it can be applied, definitely. Tenemos una pregunta de una persona que nos está escribiendo por el chat. Si es posible que a través de oír eh, los estudios, eh, una persona no judía puede elevar, elevar su alma. Nos dice Rabino Chepa que sí, que todo esto es posible. Claramente. Todo tiene una diferencia y tiene unos estándares. No es lo mismo una persona que tiene alma, un alma judía, que se conceptúa judío, judío. Esta persona puede tener unas elevaciones mucho más altas que otras. Pero también que quede claro que las personas que también pueden seguir las leyes de Noah, no adidas, y pueden elevarse también eh, a grandes niveles, simplemente llevando y estudiando Las leyes, eh, no anidas, las leyes de Noah. We got uh, one other question. We can ask, uh, ask yes. you, Rabbi. Okay, we got here. Uh, here we got a question. They say, why uh, they put stones on the grave of the Sadi king? <laughs> it's interesting that the, I, my daughter just asked me this question yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were going back to, from the grave of the Arizal and, and my daughter was asking the, exactly the same question. Um, so, first of all, there is tradition like that, okay? So, people that are, that are like uh, doing very passionately this tradition, I don't want to ruin it to them. But I, I have to say my humble opinion. Um, and it could be that, that it, it is a mistake, okay? It is my understanding. I don't have a clear inheritance about this. Um, I, I will say differently. I, I did hear it from Rav Israel Avichai that I was learning Kabbalah by him, but he himself, he said it as a possibility, okay? It, he didn't say that as something that is definitely final. So say that and then I explain the principle. Él se, se estaba riendo cuando hicimos esta pregunta. La pregunta que tenemos en el chat es que por qué se ponen piedras en las tumbas de los sadikim. Y él se rió un momento porque dice que su hija también hizo la misma pregunta cuando fueron a visitar la, la tumba de Arizal. 
Y él dice que estos son tradiciones que se siguen eh, de, de generación en generación y es algo muy común en la que esto sucede de poner piedra en, en las tumbas de los sadikim. So es, es, son, son tradiciones que se siguen. Uh, we got other Rega, I, I, I did, Rega, wait a minute. Okay. I didn't, yes, I didn't, I didn't answer. <coughs> so, so the, the principle is like this. It says in the Mishnah that someone that he died and there was a Nidui on him. Nidui is like excommunication because he was doing something not good. So they put a stone on his grave as a sign that he was in within excommunication when he passed away. Okay? So it is like it is a sign of disgrace. It is not something that is so nice. It is a sign of disgrace. So my humble opinion why people are doing that is because the the, the original the original reason of this tradition is that to give an opportunity for the person that, that is in the grave to get an atonement instead of his neshama to suffer in hell, it can be done by doing something that is like a disgrace for him to put a stone on his grave as if he died within his communication, even though he didn't. So it is, it is a certain like trick that is to, to, to do that and then to, to bring down the possibility of Hasbe Shalom uh, suffering of the Neshama in the world to come. Nos explica también el Rabino sobre la misma pregunta, por qué es que se ponen muchas veces piedra en ciertas tumbas, y él nos dice que aparte de que es una tradición, esto sucede si se pensaba que la persona en el momento de que se desconectó, murió, eh, hizo algo que estaba mal, está completamente quizá desconectado por ese, esa falta que tuvo, pues se le pone piedras en, la, en las tumbas y es como una manera de que esa persona no tenga que sufrir su alma este, en el más allá, sino que físicamente al nosotros hacer eso, estamos dándole a esa persona que no pase por ese sufrimiento, sino que es algo físico en la cual también nosotros podemos hacer para que esa alma no tenga que sufrir en el más allá. We have another question. Alguna otra pregunta? Yes, we got. I got a question here that say it's about the paracha. Why does Neshama have desire to eat meat? What that? Uh, what is the meaning about that? Uh -huh. Okay, so first of all, when someone feels desire for anything, so most of the, of the people will say, this is not the desire of the Neshama, this is the desire of the body. The body has desires of eating meat, all kinds of different things, whatever it is. It's not the Neshama, it's the body. But... I agree with the premise of this question that the desire is coming from the Neshama. But we have to understand, obviously the Neshama is supposed to have spiritual desires. So desire to learn Torah, desire to pray, desire to do good things. What does it mean that the Neshama has desire to eat meat and to do something that is physical? Okay, no explica el Rabino de que realmente el cuerpo es el que desea comer eh, carne. Pero también él dice que él está de acuerdo. Él, la Neshama también nos puede dar ese tipo de deseo. Pero realmente es nuestro cuerpo el que desea comer eh, carne en ese momento. Uh, Rabbi. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm... I don't want to make too long that, that it will be hard for you to translate, so I'm breaking it to, to a few points. Toda <laughs> But so, so, the, so to understand this uh, question and answer, so really we have to go to the 
for reason of the creation of this physical world. Why we need to create, why the Neshama have to come to connect to physical body that is living in this world, right? If, if, we, if Hashem wanted the Neshama to have just the spiritual desires, so we don't need the physical body just to leave it, leave it the Neshama in the world of the Neshama. And it will do the, all, the, all the spiritual activities, learning Torah, doing the prayer, whatever it is, without having physical body. The whole reason of coming into the physical body is what is called into, in the Kabbalah to sort out the holy sparks that are connected with the physical. So when we are eating meat, if it is done in the right way, which is very, very difficult, Okay, there is a possibility to do, to sort out a lot of sparks, okay? But because it is so difficult, most of the people, they don't do that. And when they eat meat, instead of doing elevation, to use that as a springboard to elevate themselves and the, those sparks that are within the meat or whatever physical there is, the pleasure that they have. So unfortunately, most of the people, they fall down into the physical. So instead of bringing the physical up to the neshama, they bring down the neshama into the physical. So it is, it is uh, the tradition of the, of, the, of the Mechubalim that is brought down in the writings of the Rizal is not to eat meat if it's not Shabbat or Yom Tov or so that mitzvah. Why? Because of this reason. Because when we are in those special occasions, we have more strength, spiritual strength, to uplift all of those parts. And when someone is just eating meat because of his lust, even though it's true that in the original, it comes from the Neshama, but because he doesn't know how to use that, most of the people, 99% of the people, unfortunately, the Neshama goes down. And then there's obviously negative outcomes that comes from the like uh, spiritual descending. Recibamos eh, nos explica Rabino Shepard que para poder seguir contestando esta pregunta tenemos que ir al principio de la creación. Tenemos que ir al porqué de la creación. Realmente si la Neshama no necesitara eh, un cuerpo para ciertos propósitos pues se tuviera todo el tiempo en el paraíso, en las, en las alturas, en la cual solamente estudia Torah, se mantiene haciendo los rezos, todo lo que se hace en el mundo, en el mundo alto, elevado. Pero realmente, si la Neshama eh, tiene un propósito de entrar a un cuerpo, ¿por qué? Para que nosotros podamos elevar el alma que se encuentra en ese animal cuando hacemos el, el sacrificio, cuando lo estamos comiendo. Pero también él dice de que se debería eh, no comer ninguna carne, este, a menos que sea días especiales como el Shabbat, en la cual nosotros estamos más fortalecidos espiritualmente y podemos entonces a través de nuestras bendiciones elevar esa, eh, esas almas o esa alma que se encontraba en esa carne en ese momento. Bueno, José. One more, uh, or we done? Uh, we, let me see, we got one more. No, we just, uh, we got like uh, two more questions, but it's exactly the same ones that we had before that you just explained. Okay, so so maybe final to uh, give, give over final point. I just want to say that whenever I went to the tombs of the Tzadikim, and generally, not only in, in this occasion that I'm doing going to Kivre Tzadikim, every time I'm doing special things, Sgulot, and I have in mind all of the people that are participating on those, with those, in those classes, and specifically people that are taking more responsibility to help whatever it is that they can, if it is with the translation, if it is with sharing, uh, bringing other students to join in, each one, whatever he can, everybody are getting blessings. Hashem. Nos dice Rabino que cada vez que él va a visitar los seguros, 
él siempre tiene en mente todas las personas que entran a participar de las clases, como también más que adultos, como más que acá para poder seguir este tipo de transmisión y el trabajo que se está haciendo y el trabajo que está haciendo el Rabino so, que siempre nos tiene a cada uno de nosotros en sus oraciones. Esto es algo muy importante, que nosotros nos acordemos de que tenemos que tratar de hacerse de acá para poder proseguir con el trabajo que Rabino Shepard en la cual en este momento está haciendo. And another point that I want to say, um, I don't know who he have, uh, maybe somebody that, are, that is listening, it can be relevant for him, or maybe know someone that it, it will be relevant for him. Um, I spoke in the past that I'm planning and I'm working on building a community here in Neret Israel with the help of Hashem. So except of going to the Kivrei Tzadikim, I also saw a very good property that is fitting for this purpose. It's fitting to make, to make a community. So I'm searching for someone that is able to give a serious amount of money to buy the property, to buy the piece of land, that we can go to the next stage and get, get the papers for, for, the, for building there and so on. And so if somebody wants to do it as a donation that he will be able to make the name on his name or someone else's name, the name of the, of, of, the, of the neighborhood that we will build there. It's a possibility if somebody wants to do it as a loan and he will get the money back for when people will, when they will be building, when there will be houses there, so people will buy it from him. So there's many possibilities, but if somebody have the position to, to make, to, to make a, like a serious contribution for the building of this community, um, Now we have an opportunity. It is very, very special property and a very special price, but we need to make a move. So if somebody have a way to get to someone, to speak with someone, to bring him to me, that we will do something about it, it will be wonderful. It will be a big blessing for everybody. Un terreno para poder hacer una comunidad. Dice que encontró un terreno muy bueno, a un muy buen precio. Eh, que pues, en este momento se le presentó, que el Todopoderoso le presentó. Si nosotros conocemos algunas personas que quieran aportar eh, cantidades de, de dinero para poder nosotros, eh, Rabino sí, Chepa, sí, sí, sí. establecer sí, esta sí, ciudad, sí, sí, sí. es algo muy sí, sí. importante. Eh, además, eh, la persona que aporte el dinero para esto, naturalmente, eh, de alguna manera se le estará devolviendo el dinero si lo quiere hacer de manera de préstamo o si lo quiere aportar de manera de acá también es bienvenido. O sea, que sepan que el terreno está, tenemos que dar los pasos lo más rápido posible. So, I, I, have, I, have, I, made, I made a few videos and, and took pictures of this property and I'm, I'm about to, to share them, Bezrat Hashem. When I'm going back to Yerushalayim, so we'll, we'll make it in a nice presentation, Bezrat Hashem, and it will be available also on the website, also on the different channels that, that I'm communicating with everybody. But uh, it is, uh, it is very, I, I think that it will be a very, very uh, good place. It will be between Sfat and Tveria. There's uh, many, many holy locations that are very, very close by. So to make, to make a community like that of, of that people that are wants to be connected to The, those levels of Kedusha and spirituality, and it can be very, very good location for that with the help of Hashem. Nos dice Rabino que él tomó varios videos y los va a poner así también en la página sobre el terreno para que así puedan saber dónde se encuentra. Está cerca de Sefat y Vera. Eh, no es, está cerca de la Ciudad Santa, que de esa manera también nos va a ayudar mucho a que podemos tener unas elevaciones espirituales, ya que todo se encuentra cerca de la Ciudad Santa. Eh, él va a estar bajando estos videos por los medios, en las páginas de, que, no sé, que ya se tienen, para que también ustedes puedan así poder verlas. Ok, so Bezrat Hashem, we will get together again, Blin uh, Eder, when here it's Friday morning, uh, for Alaha, uh, Alaha Shabbat, with a little bit of Parashat Shabu again. And in the meantime, I'm sending my blessings from here, the north of Israel, 
with all of the Kedusha that is here, Bezrat Hashem to all of the people that are participating, Bezrat Hashem, the merit of all of those uh, tzaddikim will protect you and help you to get the inspiration, to get the blessings, to connect to Hashem in the right way. And, and all, of the, all, of the, all of the things that you need in your life to, that Hashem will provide you in a nice, comfortable way with the help of Hashem. El Rabino ha eh, hecho la bendición de que el Todopoderoso así de la misma manera nos pueda elevar a cada uno de nosotros en niveles altos de santidad y que nosotros así también podamos sentirlo. Eh, y ahora con esta bendición él va a terminar el Shur de eh, Hashem con la ayuda de Hashem y Blineder va a hacer lo posible para que podamos eh, tener el próximo Shur eh, y él así nos no lo estará avisando con el tiempo debido. Blessings. Shalom. Toda Rabba. Toda Rabba.